Firstly, let me say it's an absolute honour and privilege to be joining you all, albeit virtually, at Mist Talks 2020. My name is Matthew Griffin. I'm the founder and CEO of the 311 Institute, the World Futures Forum and Exponential University. We're a futures and deep futures think tank that looks at the, what the world could be like in the next 50 years. So we go all the way, basically, from current year, all the way at the moment, basically, to 2070 and beyond. And we thoroughly believe in helping everybody on the planet unleash what we call their exponential potential. And as any entrepreneur will be able to tell you, the word impossible is just two letters too long. You know, when we start having a look basically, at the power that all of us have now as individuals, you know, particularly in an increasingly digitized and connected world basically, where an individual can now start influencing and impacting the lives of billions of people around the world and actually changing the world itself at a speed and a scale that was previously unimaginable. We are truly on the cusp of some very, very exciting. Um, now, when we start having a look at how technologies can help us unlock even more what we call exponential human potential, the future is very, very exciting, and we've only just gotten started. You know, when we have a look around us, the world is full of what we sort of call science fiction-like companies. Uh, for example, you know, outside of being able to produce clean meat, where we take a single cell from a single chicken, put it into a bioreactor, and then we can feed the planet good quality, for example, chicken nuggets, basically without having to kill any animals, uh, whether it is neuroprosthetics, um, where we have the ability for people who've lost limbs to control prosthetics via their brains, whether we have robot racers like this one, basically you'll see on the screen from Yamaha, where the robot racer in this particular case is racing against world championship uh, world champion Valentino Rossi. Uh, we have the advent basically of rocket travel. So if any of you are SpaceX fans, this particular concept is launching in 2024 basically and it's already had 70 flight tests. It's been approved by the FAA. Um, you all have seen the Crew Dragon going up to NASA's uh, International Space Station. Um, this is a particular concept um, allows us to live in one part of the world and commute to another part of the world within about 30 to 40 minutes. You know, if you stepped back 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, most of this stuff would have been thought of as impossible, let alone insane, and yet here we are. Um, when we start thinking about actual science fiction technologies, we have what we see on the left-hand side. We can stream your thoughts visually to YouTube or any display of your choice using a brain machine interface and artificial intelligence. These technologies also help out people with ALS uh, in hospital and healthcare settings. So they're actually being used commercially today. Um, when we start thinking about science fiction holograms as well, so the holograms, the giant ba dancing ballerina for example in Blade Runner 2049, what you see on the other side of the screen is a genuine hologram. It's created using femto lasers. There's no glass, there's no augmented reality, there's no trickery. It's the real deal. So we already live in a world where technology is helping us achieve science fiction-like things. And that's before we talk about the ability to in vivo and genetically engineer people so that they don't, so that they're immune to particular diseases. Um, using technologies like CRISPR and CAST. Um, now, as an entrepreneur, basically, this slide basically will have particular importance for you. you know, if you've created a product, particularly a digital product today, um, you can get that into the marketplace faster than ever before. You can disrupt a global industry faster than ever before. It used to take the telephone, or it took the telephone 50 years, or 75 years, sorry, uh, to get to 50 million users. Um, it took Pokemon Go 19 days to hit that benchmark, and actually it took Call of Duty four days to hit that benchmark. And then when we start thinking about being able to disrupt a global industry within the day, we have things like uh, Facebook's cryptocurrency Libra that had it been released, it could have been used by half a billion, at least half a billion people in the first day. Not only would have that altered state control of money, as governments put it at the time, but it would have uprooted the global financial system as well. So today we can disrupt at unprecedented scale. But when we start talking about our ability to put together next generation products or services, we need to find a problem. 
But we need technologies and we need to be able to combine those different technologies together to create these revolutionary, game-changing and disruptive new idea, new products and services. And I track over 450 exponential technologies. There are 180 on this chart. Any individual technology on this chart can either disrupt one industry, for example, 3D printing disrupts the $10 trillion manufacturing industry, um, or artificial intelligence, for example, can disrupt every industry. That's known as a general purpose technology. But when you start taking all of these different technologies that I have on this Starburst, and this goes from 2020 to 2070, um, it has 12 different technology categories, you can absolutely revolutionize every single corner of global culture, industry, and society as we know it. The only limits are your own imagination, and increasingly the imagination of machines, and we'll come on to that. Now, when we start having a look at today's technology landscape, you already have a second brain in your pocket. Google democratised access to information. If I ask you today what the boiling point of helium is, you'll be able to tell me in three seconds. That concept of democratisation is absolutely vital, basically, to helping humans unlock human potential as we move forward. So, on the one hand, we already have a second brain in our pockets that we can leverage. Just think about the child in this photo. He has access to all of the world's information. What are you going to do with that? Um, but we are also increasingly in the future going to be working alongside artificial intelligence. Now, this is a digital human. This is from Soul Machines. But this is a neural network avatar that have, it has its own essentially artificial intelligence brain. It can have a conversation with you, it can engage you, it can understand your emotions, and all sorts of different things. Now think of this as your next generation computer interface, where, for example, we can ask Will, the digital avatar here, to help us create a brand new product. Will can go off, he can bring up a huge amount of big data for us to identify a particular problem. Um, one problem might be trying to create the world's most dexterous robot. Um, when we start thinking of these as interfaces, as behavioural gateways, basically, to the digital world, there is absolutely no limit to what we as individual employees or workers or founders basically will be able to do, or as students that you'll be able to do. So today we have creative machines. These are artificial intelligences that are able to design and innovate products at extreme speeds, and then using 3D manufacturing, 3D print them at speed as well. So I mentioned the dexterous robot. Now think that you're an entrepreneur. How long would it take you to create the world's most dexterous robot hand? Two days? Probably not, but today it would. So this is one of my favourite creative machines. This is a creative machine from OpenAI, basically where they actually used a virtual simulation or a virtual world to help them build one of the world's most dexterous robots, which, by the way, has very useful applications in healthcare, logistics, and all kinds of different areas. We try to build robots that learn a little bit like humans do, by trial and error. What we've done is trained an algorithm to solve the Rubik's Cube one-handed with a robotic hand. Which is actually pretty hard even for a human to do. We don't tell it how the hand needs to move the, the cube in order to get there. The particular friction that's on the fingers, how easy it is to turn the faces on the cube, what the gravity, what the weight of the cube is, all of these things it needs to learn by itself. The interesting thing is that kind of standard techniques in robotics haven't been able to scale to that complexity that we see in a robotic hand. Humans have evolved to be able to manipulate and operate our hands. So there's a huge amount of learning that's happened through evolution to get us to this point as a, as a species. And the robot has to learn all of this from scratch instead of trying to write very dedicated algorithms to operate such a hand, we took a different approach where we create thousands of different simulated environments and learn to do the task in all of those 
and hopefully a robotic hand will be able to do it in the real world as well. This means like thousands of years of experience that this neural network has had in simulation. Every time the algorithm has gotten good at the task, we make the task harder. That's really crucial because it needs exposure to really complicated environments in order to eventually be robust to the real world. So to summarize, what we were able to do there is cram thousands of years of training into days. Now think about the speed that you can create new products at. Uh, and these technologies are already being used by companies like Airbus to help them accelerate the development of the A330neo. Uh, they're being used by companies like Insilico to help them produce 30,000 new drugs in 21 days. They're being used by NASA to help them create ultra lightweight lunar landers. Uh, they're also being used by companies like Under Armour who use these creative machines to help them create, for example, midsoles of shoes that can be 3D printed uh, in the back of their studios. Now, for example, in that case, it used to take Under Armour about 18 months to go from product concept to shelf. Now, basically, that can be done in, again, a couple of days. So imagine the speed that we can now start developing products as entrepreneurs and then getting them out into the marketplace. While artificial intelligence does a lot of the heavy lifting for us and a lot of the creative grunt. Um, in addition to that, when we start having a look at synthetic media, these artificial intelligences are already creating their own computer games, books, they're writing articles, they're creating music, they're being signed up by Warner and Sony um, in, the, uh, in the music and entertainment space. Um, in addition to that, they're starting to create videos and very bad movies, but nevertheless, very bad movies. So just imagine being able to have a conversation basically with Bob, your digital avatar or your digital human, and say, Bob, create me a blockbuster movie. Bob will bring all of this information together to create a movie basically that has the right tone, the right emotional tempo, all these kinds of different things, and then publish it to whatever platform you want it published. We talk in this just one slide alone, we're talking about disrupting the six trillion dollar creative uh, creative space uh, that employs 235 million people. And when we start talking about future-proofing our children, our future children need to have an exponential mindset. Basically, the, the word impossible is two, le two words, or two letters, too long, sorry. But we all need to start embracing a new way of learning. You know, these educational systems that we have today, the, particularly these, these industrial age education systems today, don't prepare us for this exponential future any longer. So we need to be adaptable. We need to be able to collaborate with humans and machines. We need confidence, creativity. We need to be very, very curious, always asking questions. We need to be entrepreneurs. We need empathy, we need ethics, because all these technologies can be used to create good, create good, like for example, a coronavirus vaccine, uh, which was developed in 10 months, not 10 years, using some of these different technologies that I've discussed. Um, we need to be able to think exponentially. Uh, we need leaders, we need morality, we need to be resourceful, and we need to be able to tell stories. And when we start looking within ourselves, there is nothing better and nothing more rewarding than being able to help others unlock their own potential. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and it's been great to be here with you all and take care. Goodbye.